Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Hi, welcome back to On the Volley, OTV for sure, where we talk about all things football. And yep, you guessed it. I'm here to talk about Celtic and the first trophy of the season. Well, you know, we played Hibernian in the Premier Sports Cup final, or as I like to call it, the Scottish League Cup final. And that's what I'm going to keep calling it. And great result, 2-1, 2-1. Look, I thought basically it was a game of two halves. Uh, you know, the first half, we had most of the possession, practically all of the possession, to be totally honest, okay? Uh, Hibernian didn't trouble us. But we didn't do much in the, in the you know, last third of the pitch. Um, I thought there was an opportunity where uh, Kyogre could have been put through. Uh, Mickey Johnson had the ball. You know, he's, he's gone past two defenders, okay? He's cut back on the outside. T takes a shot and understandable. I mean, from there, he had sight on goal. He just uh, skied it over. Um, if he just looked, okay, Kyogre had run through into a bit of space. He could have just pushed the ball to Kyogre. And who knows, maybe we could have been one up in the first half. But hey, there you have it. You know, uh, you can't blame Mickey for having a shot. Um, you know, he did all the hard work. So I didn't think he had a bad game. Um... But let's 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 go back a bit here. I mean, before the game, no one expected uh, Kyogre to play. Kyogo to play, but uh, to be totally honest, <coughs> you know, I mean, the guy had a hamstring injury, and I think on the last podcast I said that normally a hamstring injury takes about two weeks to 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 heal, as far as I could remember. So I thought to myself, let me just go and check it out, yeah, because I. I don't like talking crap, yeah. Uh, I was just going back on memory from when I was playing football. So I went I went and had a look, and they've got like um, hamstring injuries, which are grade one and grade two or three, yeah. Now, a grade one hamstring injury apparently can take anything between three days to three weeks to heal. So, yeah, I, I, I ain't got a clue. Um, grade two onwards takes anything from three weeks to three months to heal. So obviously I would assume that Kayako didn't have a grade two, grade three hamstring injury. It's probably a grade one, but uh, you've got to give it to the guy. I mean, he did everything possible to make sure that he was available for that game. And Ange did come out and say, one, that, you know, he wasn't 100% fit. Um, and the fact that there was no way, okay, Ange, yeah, that, sorry, Kyogo was not going to play. I mean, he said it in his mind from when he picked up the injury that he was going to play in that final, and that was his goal. That's what he worked on, uh, uh, okay, on his healing process. Don't ask me what the guy done, but he, he did everything he could to make sure he was available. Um... No one expected him to play, to be totally honest. Okay, the players didn't expect him to be uh, fit and available. Uh, Ange didn't expect him to be fit and available. Uh, the medical staff didn't expect him to be fit and available. The only person that was convinced that he was going to be fit and available for the, the final was Kyogre himself. And he proved everyone wrong. And as Ange said, Ange basically said, you try and stop him from playing OK, he would have just snuck onto the coach, you know, he would have snuck onto the field, you know, without hands watching. And, you know, that says a lot about Kyogo. I mean, <laughs> I've said it before. I love the guy. I love the guy. And I'll tell you what, him being a starter, OK, on the team sheet, it must have given confidence to everyone. I know it gave a lot of confidence to me. Hibernian must have been cursing when they saw that. Um, anyway, let's let's get on. let's let's get back to the game. Um, first half, like I said, you know, it wasn't very eventful apart from 
the Turnbull injury, you know, he <laughs> another hamstring injury, what can I say, uh, on the 27th minute, and um, Bitten came on for him. So, you know, it, it, yeah, at least we had someone to take Turnbull's place. Um, I hope he's not out for too long. He's been playing really well. Uh, so hopefully he'll be back soon. Um, second half starts. And that's when the game started. Now, you know, they get a corner. Starfelt was at fault. Okay, you know, another set piece. They score. Hamlin, centre back. Okay, he started from outside the box. And as the corner was taken, he ran in. Okay, and really, Starfelt was really slow on it. Yeah, he, he should have been on him. He should have been tight on him. He wasn't. Okay. Hanlon goes soaring up, boom, great goal. You know, you've got to give it to him, OK? Um, we're at fault. Starfield should have had him. But again, again, it's a set piece where we let a goal in. But I'll be honest with you, <laughs> I still wasn't worried, OK? Even though we went 1-0 down, I still, I was still saying, you know, we're going to win this. We're going to win this. Um, but even I was amazed by the fact that we scored within a minute. We equalised within a minute. Now, you know, props to Callum McGregor, OK? You know, he saw Kyogo put the ball in. A fantastic first touch and control by Kyogo, OK? Just one touch to control it. Bam, shot inside of the post. Just brilliant, OK, right? You know, uh, anyone would have thought that he would have gone for the far side, OK? Oh, no, 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 just snuck it inside. Great goal, fantastic goal. And we're back to 1-1. One, one. Uh, you know, and uh, so I think we had a lot of the, the, the dominance still, OK? We, we, we did dominate that, yeah. Uh, then Abada gets, gets fouled. Um, Rogic... Sees Kyogo, he just knocks over to him. Now, you've got to realise, now, Kyogo, OK, there are three defenders there. He just runs into space, OK, as the cross comes over, as a free kick comes over. Kyogo takes a look at the keeper to see where, uh, you know, his positioning. He lets the ball bounce once, OK, and as the ball came back up after the first one bounce, he just lobbed the keeper inch Perfect. What a goal. 2-1. And I tell you, I tell you, that was, that was it. That was it. You, um, I, I just went wild. I was just, you know, I was just, yes. Okay. Also, because I predicted that would be Hibernian. I've also predicted earlier on in my podcast, okay, that uh, Ange Postacoglu will win at least one trophy. I did say that. I have so much confidence in a guy. Um <clears throat> But Kyogo made the difference. Kyogo made the difference, and he was man of the match. But let's not underestimate um, the contribution of Joe Hart, because what happens next is Starfield, I don't know what he was doing, okay, right, defender goes past him. Um, I think Starfield went with his left foot to try and clear it, okay, right, made a hash of it. The defender, okay, runs off, okay, uh, Starfelt follows him, and the defend, sorry, the, the, the hips player, okay, and the hips player just um, turned Starfelt in and out, okay, twice, takes a shot, great save by Joe Hart. Then we get, uh, hips get another opportunity, I mean, they, they were just last 10, 15 minutes just piling it on. Um, Nisbet, I think it was, okay, hits the post with a header. Ball comes back to Hanlon, and don't ask me how he done it. He just skied it, okay, right? To be totally honest, Hanlon should have done better with that, and it could have been, uh, you know, 2-2 two, two there. In the midst of all this, okay, Starfield seemed to me as if it was a clear push on one of the Hibs players, okay, uh, I mean, I could hear the hips player scream uh, over here in Rome, do you know what I mean? Uh, not because it was on telly, but, you know, just as a figure of speech. I mean, he, he just screamed, but, I mean, it was just a push, yeah. It's not like he got really, really, you know, clad, hammered, okay? So I thought that was a bit of an exaggeration. 
But you can understand it because he was looking for a penalty. And to be totally honest, okay, I thought the referee was going to give it. Let me put it like this, okay? If that had been us and a defender had pushed one of our players, okay, to the ground like that, and we weren't given a penalty, we would have been cursing. We would have been saying that we were robbed, okay? Look, I'm just keeping it real. At, at least I'm talking about me. This is what I would have done. And I think quite a few Celtic supporters would probably have reacted the same way if the you know situations were reversed. Uh, and the reason, the reason I, I point that out is because John Beaton was the um, referee. And when we found out that John Beaton was the referee, uh, there were a few people that were worried out there. Yeah, you know, oh dear, John Beaton, oh God, what's going to happen? So on and so forth. You know, to be totally honest, I thought John Beaton had a decent enough game. He made mistakes. That was a mistake as far as I'm concerned. You know, we probably could have had a penalty in the first half as well. Yeah, so, you know, things even itself out, okay. Um, you know, he, there, there were, there were um, yellow cards, okay, to Hibs players, which he should have given, and he didn't, okay. So, you know, but uh, that's, that's football, that's football. I mean, the bottom line... What counts is we won. We won our first trophy. The first, but not last. Uh, so, you know, it was a great day. A great day. Um, and I'm happy for Ange. I'm help, happy for Celtic. Uh, I'm happy for Kyogre for Ahashi. Uh, I'm happy for um, Joe Hart. Hey, <laughs> I'm happy for everyone, you know, so... So it, it was a good day. It was a good day. Um, and, you know, I hate to repeat myself, but I, I just feel I have to, um, you know, because you look at what Ange has achieved in the short space of time that he's been there. Okay. It's, in, it's exceptional. It's incredible. Um, he's still getting injuries, you know. Um, yeah, he's still without some key players. Uh, but you wouldn't, you wouldn't think it. Watching how the team plays, yeah, you wouldn't think it because Ange has imposed a certain style, okay, which is which is um, exceptional. And then when you look at it, when you know when um, they went to pick up the trophy, you know, uh, Ange called everyone the backroom staff and everything. You know, he took a photo with the backroom staff. And that makes me think about something which uh, had been discussed, which I'd been informed of at, you know, the beginning of this journey, which I've been taking. I remember when I um, interviewed Mike, uh, ardent Celtic supporter, lives out here in Rome, known him for quite a while now. And one of the things he, he said to me, he said that uh, one of the main problems is Kennedy and Strachan, you know, especially Kennedy. He, he's got to be in his bonnet about Kennedy um, and the fact that, you know, the, the board are very loyal to these people. They'll never change him. That's why Ange couldn't bring in his own backroom, backroom staff. Um, but hey, they must be doing something right uh, because Ange hasn't complained about him. Well, not that he would do publicly, even if he wasn't happy with him. But um, I think they've all got on board Angie's philosophy, okay? And that's the most important thing, okay? I don't care who makes up the backroom staff, so long as they follow Ange, uh, they do what he asked them to do, and we're getting a result. That said, apparently Kennedy's Kennedy is in charge of the, you know, defensive um, uh, strategy and that. And to be totally honest, okay, the defence has improved vastly. Okay, Starfelt had a shocker, but it's one game, okay? He has vastly improved. Maybe, just maybe, the occasion got to Starfelt. I don't know. Maybe it was the nerves, okay, right? Because he's been playing really, really well up until uh, the, 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 the final OK, um, and let's not forget, Starfield could have possibly had uh, two goals, 
at least one, okay, you know, with, with headers, okay, right, and corners. He should have at least had one of them on target. Um, but, hey, it was an off day for Starfelt. You know, I'm not going to criticise the guy. I'll point out the mistakes, but you can't criticise the guy because, I mean, the bottom line is, you know, mistakes will be made in football. Um, and I'll tell you something else, okay, right? It doesn't matter because we won. It's the first trophy and there's more to come. I feel a little bit sorry for the Hibs fans, okay? Especially when we equalised after, you know, within one minute. Uh, and the reason for that is, as uh, an Arsenal fan as well, <laughs> I've been through it. You know, Arsenal scored a goal. A mi in, within a minute, okay, they've equalised. And you think to yourself, what the hell? You know, how can you just turn off like that? Okay, you're supposed to be on the ball all the time, especially just after you scored. So, I mean, you know, no complaints on my part. Okay, I'm happy with it. Um, but I'm pretty sure that the, the hip supporters aren't too happy about it. But what I will say, okay, to the hips fans is I think, you know, yeah, you lost, but, you know, you, you can you can still hold your head up high. Um, you had opportunities. Unfortunately, it just didn't go your way uh, on the day, you know, and, and, and that's football. And plus, remember something, okay, right? You're playing a team, okay, that plays high intensity, high pressure, uh, you know, to close you down. It's not, it's not easy to play against Celtic. The Celtic of today, okay? And it's only, only going to become even harder if we get the right um, transfers in. So, you know, if, I'm a, if I was a Hibs fan, I wouldn't be beating myself up about it. I'd be disappointed. Yeah, of course I would. But I wouldn't beat myself up about it. I'd turn around and say, you know what? We stood our ground. Okay, right. We had chances. Uh, you know, especially the last 10, 15 minutes, we took it to them. Um, so, hey, you know, that, that's all I've got to say to the, to the Hibs fans and, you know, the, the, the Hibs team uh, as such. Oh, man, man, it's a good feeling. It's a good feeling, especially when you see where we started from. So I'm happy, you're happy, we're all happy. Um, that's it. I don't really have much more to say on that. Okay, right? You know, let's look forward now to the next game, which is against, uh, we're away to St. Mirren. Um, <laughs> we need to win that, <laughs> obviously, because we need to keep on the towel of them lot down there, down the road, you know what I mean? So... Uh, them lot down the road still got a, a, a gap on us. Uh, we need to close that gap. Um, I've said this already in the past. I think it's going to go down to the wire. Um, so we need to keep on top of our game. Uh, not lose sight. Take every game one at a time, which is what Ange does. It's his philosophy. Um, and let's see whether or not we can bring the Scottish League title home as well. It's not going to be easy. It's not going to be easy. I'm not, I'm not saying it will. Uh, a lot will depend on the 2nd of January. Uh, we need to win that game. Okay. Uh, personally, I believe it's a must-win game. Uh, personally, I believe we can win that game. Look, let's not forget, um, in the first fixture against against them, which was on the 29th of August, I believe, yeah, we lost 1-0. Um, and I won't, I'll never forget because we had uh, Kyoga Furuhashi playing on the left, Abada playing on the right, and I think we had Giacomakis up front, okay? Um, and there was a few comments to the fact that... Uh, Kyoga Furuhashi is wasted out on the left. He should be playing uh, down the middle. Okay, that's where he's more dangerous. Um, and I think that will be the case um, on the 2nd of January. So I'm looking forward to that. One thing that did surprise me before before I go, yeah, on the, on the game against Hibernian, 
um, watching it on the box, okay, and you know, uh, this the pundits that were saying, "Oh, you know, uh, Furuhashi was uh, was quiet until he scored those two goals." That's nah, no, nah, I'm sorry, mate. Uh, I, I I don't agree with you. You know, you might be an expert or whatever, but you've got to look at uh, how Furuhashi plays, how Kyogo plays. Okay, right? He he plays off the defender's shoulder. Okay, he looks for those spaces. There were a couple of occasions, okay, right, where, you know, if, if the ball had been passed to him, he, he, he probably would have scored. Uh, so, I mean, if you look at it, okay, you, you say he was quiet. No, he wasn't. He's always looking for spaces. He's always looking for the run, okay. He tracks back, okay, and he scored two goals. And he scored two goals. So, you know, if that's being quiet, mate, okay, I want Kyogre quiet every single game. Yeah, look, you, you have to you have to understand how the guy plays. Okay, that's his game, and he's always running. He's always looking for that space. Uh, you know, sometimes I think we're too slow. Sometimes I think, you know, Kyogre sees the space and we don't see it. Okay, so you know, but that's going to come. That's going to come. Um, and maybe with new additions, uh, maybe players that uh, are, 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 you know, um, what's the word for it? Um, that know him, okay? Uh, maybe we'll see more. I don't know. Maybe we'll have more of an attacking force um, and maybe we'll have more firepower, okay? Especially if we get in uh, Dyson uh, Maida. Okay, um, but then again, like I said, it's, it's still all speculation as far as I'm concerned. Uh, I'll believe it when I see it. Look, that's it from me. Okay, on to St. Mirren. Let's hope we win that game. Um, if you like this video, please press like, um, share. Okay, please do us a favor. Uh, don't forget to subscribe. Me, I'm out.